Of those four properties of color that we talked about, hue, value, chroma, temperature, um, the place that we're gonna start is value. So that's a light dark component that every hue has along that gray scale from white to black. And the reason we're starting there is because uh, it's the simplest place to start. We can describe a lot about what we're seeing um, just through value. We can describe space and volume and the quantity of light, you know, how bright a light is, not the quality of light, but the, the quantity of it. Um, so, um, so it's just a good, simple place to start. And we're just going to start with white and black um, and rather than the full palette right at the beginning, just to get the feeling of how this paint works and, and also to, to get a sense of, um, you know, of value and how to operate with value. Um, and the way that we're going to start is through what are called value scales. And this is um, it's a very um, sort of traditional, fundamental painting exercise. It's not the most interesting thing, but just um, hang with it. And it's, it's a way to, to, to sort of bet, best get you um, in touch with the notion of creating value and value progressions. Um, and, also, um, and also the idea that, that when we look at nature and we paint, what we've got to do is we have to translate, as I said before, we're translating what we see or what we feel into, uh, into paint. And that, means, and that means looking at things that are essentially infinite. Like when we look at nature, it's infinitely complex. Um, and, but we don't really have that luxury of making something infinitely complex on the canvas. We have to, we have to take the infinite and make it finite for ourselves. We've gotta, we've gotta find boundaries to things. We can't think of things being completely open-ended. So, so it's important to think, um, when we're thinking about paint, um, to think in terms of discrete shapes, disc and in terms of value, discrete progressions of value. So we can't just look at a value and say, oh, that's just a fuzzy, fuzzy kind of darkish value. We've gotta say, no, that's, that's gonna be this for my painting. I have to, I have to make a commitment and, and translate that complexity into something that I can actually mix up and put down on, on canvas. Um, so the value scale gives you a sense of that because it divides things into discrete little boxes and units. Um, so I've got, I've got two, two scales here that I'm gonna make you guys um, do as well. A three-step scale and a five-step scale, which I've already done here, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but, um, but with a three-step scale, what we're going to do is just start getting a feel for, um, uh, for value and a simple light-dark progression. So, so the first step here is just going to be, that's gonna be our lightest step. And so we're just gonna use the white of the paper for that, so we don't have to think about that. And then on the other side of that uh, scale is gonna be our darkest dark, which is gonna be just pure black. So, um, so you get your brush and just put out white and black on your palette, opposite ends, and just go purely into your, into your black. And then um, just get used to the feeling of painting properly with this. So you won't have complete control, but you can always kind of firm up your, your shapes later. But stay back at about arm's length and to put down you can hold the brush, you know, like this. You can hold it like this, but just hold it back. Don't hold it up really close because that's going to make you sort of get closer to the canvas. You want to step back. And as best you can, just sort of fill in that, that last box. These are all two by two squares, which I'm going to have you create. And I've gone ahead and lined them out with pencil and a ruler so I can make a very definite, a very definite shape. And when you go into the paint, get a good amount of paint. You don't want it to be, don't put any water into it. It shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't need to be thinned down at all because you want it to cover. And the goal with each of these boxes is to create a very, uh, uh, a very unified little unit of value. So you don't want white stripes sort of coming through because you're not putting, you're putting in too much water and some of the paper's coming through. You're trying to, you don't have to glob the paint on but you want, it, you want enough on so that it covers. And if you're getting a little bit of a glare from where you're working, you can just pull all the paint down in one direction and, and get rid of the glare. All right, so there's my, so I've got my one step, which is the white. I've got my black, which is my step number three. So now what I wanna do is I just wanna create something I think is about in between the white and the black. So I'm gonna mix up, uh, mix up white and black. And you can start with white, you can start with black. It doesn't really matter. And just, just sort of judge, make your best judgment. The key is to not necessarily, with these first scales, to not be perfect about the transitions. 
you know, it doesn't have to be exactly between white and black, but you just want a discrete, definite value that's very different looking from white and very, very different looking from black as well. Because when we use these scales, we want to give ourselves kind of the, the maximum amount of values or maximum amount of, of ammunition to work with when we're limiting ourselves to, to values. And you might ask, well, why do we have to limit ourselves to values? Well, it's just a little bit easier to control the process at the beginning if you don't have 50 million different values that you're working with. And you can, you can actually describe a lot with as little as seven to nine values. You can make something very, very convincing nat in terms of um, how, it, how it looks naturalistically. So it doesn't take a lot of different values. It's, it's more about making good judgments about um, these uh, these, these shapes that you've distilled nature into, coming up with good, um, you know, good value approximations. All right, so I'm just going to this value in. So it's already looking a little, a little dark. So I might just take that off before I go any further. One thing about um, acrylic paint that you'll find is that it dries a little bit darker than when you put it on. So you might go over these, have to go over these um, scales a couple of times because you might start off too dark. So just keep that, keep that in mind. And I want, um, I want my, uh, again, my steps to be discreetly different from one another. And I also want to make sure that um, I'm careful when the one color comes up or one value comes up against the other. So when I put this middle value up against the black, the black is uh, almost dried, which is one of the benefits with acrylic when doing these scales is it, it dries very quickly. So you can make kind of a clean, you can make a clean division between one value and the next. And I want the whole block to be even. I don't want stripes sort of moving through it. Okay. And then I'm going to, if I get a little sloppy on the edge, which I've done here, I can come back with my white and just use the white and clean up the edge. Okay. So then I can step back and I look at that and, and I can say, okay, was well, there a, a big jump from here to here? And is that jump about the same as from here to here? And I might say, well, you know, this jump from here to here maybe seems a little bit more than from here to here, so then I would go back and maybe lighten that, that second value a little bit. But the idea is to just try to get three discrete, very different values with your three-step scale. With your five-step scale, um, it t it's, a, it's a little bit more, it's gonna take a little bit more work because you want to, you want to create a scale where the jump from one value to the next is a little bit more even. Um, and that's a little bit harder to do over five steps than it is over, over three steps. So with the five step scale, you might have to work, work a little bit more at to get that, to get that even, um, even step. So like when I look at from here to here and I look at the jump in between, does that seem about the same kind of jump as from here to here? Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you just don't want two values that are um, kind of mushing together um, because they're they're a little too much the same value because then if I go to paint with this scale, which you're going to do, then you've given yourself fewer, uh, fewer options. You have a less broad range to, to draw from um, when you do your painting. So you're trying to get the maximum amount of, of jump between each, um, each value progression. Yeah. All right. So start with the three-step. Um, once you do that, then go to the five-step.